What's up guys, it's Jamie, welcome back. In this video, what I'm gonna do is kind of give my review and overall impressions of the chair that you might have seen in a bunch of my videos behind me. It's my Herman Miller and body chair. I've had this chair for almost two years, so I have purchased this chair on three different occasions. I've also compared it to some other popular desk chairs. So I think I have a pretty good idea as to how this compares to what else is out there kind of why I choose this to be my everyday at home used desk chair. So I'm gonna go over some of the features of the chair, why I actually like it, design aspects, and give my overall review. Before shooting this video, I just went online real quick to check to see where the prices are. It's kind of all over the place depending upon where you look. If you look on Herman Miller, it might be one price point because it seems like they have the newer options of colors available, whereas Amazon has some of the old older options. The, bit, the main thing when purchasing this chair is that you wanna make sure that you're going through either Herman Miller or Herman Miller authorized retailer because you do get a pretty tremendous warranty. It's like 12 years or so. You can also look on Craigslist. The nice thing about this chair is that it is well known. It's been out for a very long period of time so that they're, they do come up on Craigslist or other you know third party secondary shopping sites to where you can get one for a little bit of a cheaper price. I'm not sure what the warranty aspect is when you know shopping secondary market. So the chair is very expensive. I've seen prices anywhere from like around 1100 US dollars up to around 1700, depending upon how it's been equipped. I think that when I did purchase, it was around $1,500 based upon how I had it configured. But I will say after buying it three different times, there's a reason why I do still have this chair, why I continue to purchase it. For someone who does work from home and is in front of the computer many hours throughout the day, having a good chair really does impact, I think, your overall productivity. So there's been instances in which I've tried to purchase smaller chairs. I didn't want to have to buy this thing three different times. So I did, at one point, I purchased like a cheap chair from Wayfair, it was like 150 bucks, it looked nice, and I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna go and, instead of biting the bullet, I'm just gonna get this thing and I'm just gonna put up with it. And it was literally just a couple months that I could deal with it before I ended up going ahead and buying the Herman Miller and body chair all over again. One thing that I would recommend is really shop around for this. There's a bunch of different authorized retailers that are available online. You don't have to go directly through Herman Miller and you can find some that are already pre-configured in a good way, like with the configuration that you would actually want and not have to have the lead time. A lot of times if you do like a custom build, it's not like a black on black on black model. They have like four to six weeks, if not longer for that chair to come in. Whereas a lot of these retailers, they are authorized, so you do get all the same warranty and all the same benefits, but they have stock of a bunch of different configurations. So you can go ahead and purchase directly, not have to wait. And they're also pretty good with discounting. I've been able to negotiate certain discounts with different retailers. So it's not a bunch, but anything helps. So what I'll do first is just go through the overall spec of the chair that I got, look at the design, then I'll go through all the different features and adjustability that it comes with. When you guys are watching the video, if you could just give it a quick like. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Now let's go. All right, so one of the most noticeable things about the Herman Miller and body is the actual design itself. This is what initially just drew me to the chair. You never see an office chair that looks like this. For the most part, they're all like very like lame and boring looking chairs, black chairs that just don't look like anything. So when you see something like this, it just, it's just crazy looking. Like this whole architecture in the back, it's meant to you know, help with overall back support, but it also just lends to like a crazy looking design. It kind of reminds me of like Professor X in like Spider, in, uh, in X-Men with his whole like crazy uh, wheelchair. But this overall frame, I have it in the white color. It's also available in black. I've had both. I think the first time around, I ended up getting the black color. 
The reason why I like going with the white, the, my last two chairs were in white, I decided to go with it because it just stands out a little bit more. The back plate here on the black color is not like this as translucent. It, it looks a little bit more black. So these components naturally being a darker color, it kind of like blends in a little bit more with the back of the chair. One downside with the white, obviously, with it being white is that it does get a little bit dirtier. It shows dust and whatnot a little bit more easily, but I think it's 100% worth it when you consider how much better it looks. I mean, the thing looks super cool. I think the gray and the white looks really, really good. I've had gray, I've had blue, I've also had black. I think my last chair was black and white, kind of like that Oreo type of a look. And the place that I was purchasing it from, they didn't have any of the black fabric in stock. So instead of just waiting and having it, you know, be built to order, I just went ahead and get, got the gray color that they had. I still think it looks, looks nice. The arm rests are black, so I liked the kind of matching of the, ch the chair fabric color with the armrest. The other areas in which you can customize the chair are with the base and then the casters or the wheels. So the base comes in both what is called titanium, which is this color, and then it comes in graphite, which is more of a black color. I've had both titanium and black. I do like the titanium a little bit better. I think that it shows dust a little bit less. I think it matches much better with the white color. One area that I would recommend upgrading is in the wheels or the casters. So I think they have three different wheel options, a hardwood floor wheel, a carpet wheel, and then they have these translucent caster option. These are good for both hardwood floors as well as carpet. So they move around a lot easier. With that being said, I get them mainly just because I think that they look cooler. One thing that you will notice is just how wide the seat pan is compared to the back of the chair. For, for me, I really like this aspect. It might look a little weird, but having a wide seat pan just makes for a much more comfortable experience for an extended period of time. I find that throughout the day, the way that I sit in the chair adjusts a little bit. And so this wide seat pan gives you a lot of different maneuverability and room so you can move around the chair throughout the day. While the back is really nice because it's meant to just mimic the shape of your overall spine and it's movable as well. So this can, this can adjust and kind of be more flexible as you move around in the chair. And so that's why they kind of keep it a little bit more narrow. So as your back's adjusting, it has the ability to kind of move with you. So when looking at the different controls on the chair, through this lever, this is how you have the, the chair go up and down. It's a clear lever right here. The nice thing about it is that you can push this lever in any direction to engage the up or down function. This knob controls the tension of the chair when leaning backward or forward. So if you spin the knob forward, what it does is it makes the tension greater when trying to lean backward. If you turn the knob backward, it makes it much easier to lean back on the chair. So you have a ton of variability when turning this. So you're able to really dial it in depending upon what your specific preference is. And that can also change throughout the day as your work goes on. So I've turned this lever pretty far forward and I need to, in order to lean back, I really need to put some pressure on my feet to push the chair back. If I spin it backward, the chair is in like a constant lean. So there's really no effort needed. It's just your body weight putting the chair back in a lean. The other control on the side of the chair is this lever that controls the overall lumbar of the back portion. So if you spin this toward the chair, what it's gonna do is tighten up this lumbar and help conform to your specific spine. If you go backward with it, it will loosen it up a little bit. So you can see as I spin this forward, you start to see the back of the chair moving forward a little bit 
and tightening up as a whole. There's a handle on this side and there's also the same handle on the other side. This allows the seat pan to move forward or backward. So depending upon how your actual setup of your body is, you might want to have this a little bit further forward. It's also nice that maybe on extended work days, you want to have a little bit more thigh support where you can extend this a little bit forward. There's not a ton of variability, but it's a nice thing to have. I don't know many officers that actually have this option. Here you can see the function of pulling the thigh support in and out. I just put my hands on these levers, pull up a little bit and out. So you get maybe a few inches of additional thigh support. So on the left side of the chair, the only lever that you have is this one right here. So if the lever is all the way down, it allows for full lean backward. And then you have different positions in which you can lift this lever up to restrict that lean. If you have the lever all the way up, it's going to restrict the chair from leaning back at all. Here you can see the lever for the back movement. It's in the all the way down position right now, giving me full range of motion. If I lift it up to the highest level, you see it just blocks that movement. You do have a few more positions, so you can dial it in to what you like. And you'll see each position you go further down, it allows for further range of motion. The armrests go up and down by engaging this trigger right here. So if I push this trigger, you're able to raise and lower the armrest. In addition to raising and lowering the armrest, you do have the ability to bring them in or out. There's not a ton of variability, but it is nice to have that option. It's not as elegant as the raising and lowering. You literally just pull the armrest. So right now I have it in a fully in position. If I just pull on the armrest, I can pull it outward. There are a few different levels in which you can vary this. I don't know why you would ever have it in this position, but it's nice to have that option. Another nice aspect about the armrests is that these are padded and they're padded very nicely. A lot of times I'll have my elbows just pointed downward on these and these do not dent at all. I haven't seen any real wear on this piece of the chair at all, even with extended use and I've had this for two years now. So that's my overview of the Herman Miller and body chair. Like I said, I think if, if it works within your budget and you do need a home desk setup or you're looking for an office chair, I do recommend this chair. I think it is amazing. Even though it is super expensive, I think it is one of those things where it is worth the overall cost. If you have any questions or anything that I didn't really cover, please comment below. If you haven't already, please give the video a like. Also subscribe to my channel. I'll catch you guys in the next video.